Lord, save me is one of the shortest yet most powerful prayers you could pray. Here's why. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be in the New Testament to talk about one of the most popular stories and one of the greatest prayers in the Bible. From Matthew 14, starting in verse 22, it says, Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat by this time was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night he came to them walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him on the sea, they were terrified and said, It is a ghost, and they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. Think for a moment about the scene. The waves are crashing against the disciples' small fishing boat. The wind is against them, and they're trying to make it to the other side of the lake. John 6 says they've rowed about three or four miles against this strong wind. It's late at night, and they're probably tired from ministry and traveling. Then they see Jesus, thinking he's a ghost. They see Jesus in the midst of chaos. The sea must have seemed chaotic. It's in the middle of the night, so it was dark. The wind is blowing and the waves are crashing around them. This wind and darkness reminds me of Genesis 1 when it says, The earth was formless and void, and darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. The Spirit of the Lord is hovering over chaotic waters in Genesis 1, and Jesus has entered our chaotic world, and now the God of the universe is walking over the surface of these waters on the Sea of Galilee. But the disciples think it's an apparition or a ghost. And Jesus tells them, take courage. It is I, or in the Greek, ego eimi, I am. Do not be afraid. Jesus tells them he is the one true God as he uses the name that was revealed to Moses in the burning bush. He is telling them that he is Yahweh, the God of the Old Testament. And Peter responds, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Think about this truth. Peter left the safety of the boat for the chaos in the storm so he could go to Jesus, who in all reality is safer than the boat. But when he sees the wind around him, he begins to sink. He loses his focus on Christ, and immediately he's fully immersed in this water, with waves crashing all around him. We also have chaos, life circumstances from living in a sinful world, sin in our own lives that takes our focus off of Jesus and what he has done for us. These things, idols, life circumstances, our own efforts and our sin takes our eyes off of Jesus and his work. So, what do we do when we become distracted from the gospel? Well, let's take a look back at the story. Peter falls into the water and cries out one of the greatest prayers we should cry out. Lord, save me. We can think of Peter's prayer in two ways. The first way is that Peter wants to be saved from physical death, and we want to be saved from this as well. None of us want to die, but unfortunately, each one of us will physically die if Jesus doesn't return first. The second way is that Peter wants Jesus to save his soul, and we should want our souls to be saved as well. We don't want to endure God's wrath in eternity. Instead, we want to be saved from our sin, God's wrath for our sin, eternal death, and Satan. And if we are in Christ, we have good news. Jesus says this in John 8, 51. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. And Paul in Philippians 1 says this, For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. And in 2 Corinthians 5, he says, Yes, we are of good courage, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. I don't fully understand how it works out when we physically die, but there seems to be complete peace that when Christians leave this earth, we will never see or taste death, and we will immediately be in the presence of the Lord. 
When we become distracted by the chaos of life, we should cry out the same thing as Peter. We should ask God to save us. We should ask God to rescue us from our sin. We should ask Him to help us trust Him more than the things of this world. And in the same way that He reached out to Peter to pull him from the raging sea, Jesus will immediately reach out to us and save us. He'll forgive us of our sin. He'll empower us for service by the power of His Holy Spirit. Today is the day of salvation. Cry out for Jesus to save you, and He will because He has finished the work of salvation for you through His death on the cross and His resurrection from the dead.